Good morning. Welcome to Friday. It is the 19th of April. I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, we're going to pick up Psalm 139 in just a moment. I want to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, share these videos uh, with people. Uh, I believe that God is doing some great things and we're seeing lives changed. Um, if you want to donate into the ministry, Tom and Sarah at outlook.com and i just say hey i want to know how to donate into it and i'll send you a link we have cash app venmo paypal zelle um we also do checks um money orders <laughs> cashier's check it don't matter but um yeah and uh, and i have these two books for sale one of them is called sos song of solomon uh, a 50-day journey into the heart of God is out of the Passion Translation. It's geared for five to ten minutes a day, um, devotional to interact. There's things you can do in there. There's uh, statements you can write. There's pictures you can draw um, and little things like that. SOS, a 50-day journey into the heart of God. Um, a few years ago, I had a major nervous breakdown in 2018. Uh, so much so that I didn't want to get out of bed, um, didn't want to eat, nothing. Anyway, it was during the fires here in Reading. Um, and so I want to, I want to say that, uh, I, you know, it, it brought me through a situation. I went to some counseling, had some people help. And, um, and anyway, I wrote a little devotional about it from breakdown to breakthrough, my journey to soul health. It has my story. Uh, of my experience going to heaven. I went to heaven a few times and, and I have that in here. Um, also, I went, I took a trip in 2019 back to where my Christian life started, back to where I received Jesus. And, um, and my, my best friend out there, he has the gate radio, the gate org, the gate radio.org or, um, it's, uh, it's from the, uh, International House of Prayer, Eastern Gate. And uh, anyway, so I got to visit with him, spend some time uh, away, uh, not only from people, but also I was able to walk his dog a few times and, and just get with God, basically. And so this book deals with that. And there's also here resources and ideas that you can use to uh, bring your soul back into health. We are in a society of stress. We and our society is full of stress right now. And one way to combat that is to bring our soul back to health. Um, you know, he says, uh, David says in Psalm 46, Oh, my soul, why are you disquieted within me? Put your hope in God. Psalm 23, he restores my soul. And then uh, in Matthew 11, he says, um, uh, And you will find rest, you will find Sabbath for your soul. Anyway, um, another book you can get, and I recommend, I mean, there's so many of them, but right now uh, is this book called Questions for Jesus, written by Tony Stolfus. And you can get that on Amazon. You can get all three of them on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and, 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 uh, and walmart.com. And, uh, and you can get these books. And, uh, and that Questions for Jesus revolutionized my prayer life and opened a door to heaven for me, and uh, where I wasn't just bringing God a list of things and feelings pious about it, but I was actually discussing what was on his, what was on his heart to do. Anyway, yeah, that's enough commercials. Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com if you need any more information. Um, I want to pick up where we left off uh, yesterday, um, where he said there's no such thing as darkness. Well, now verse 13 of Psalm 139. Everybody go there. And I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. Psalm 139, verse 13. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them together in my mother's womb. All right? Uh, that, that knitting together or weaving together also takes with it uh, the idea or the or the concept of defending. See, we are in a society now where babies are not defended in the womb um, from people who should be defending them. 
They're taking them out. He wove us together in our mother's womb. Uh, let's go quickly to Jeremiah. I'm going to have to change my um, I'm going to have to change my book here to New American Standard. I love the New American Standard. And uh, and let's go to Jeremiah. All right, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Wow, okay. I'm so sorry, it's just taking me forever to get here. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter one. And verse four. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, remember we were talking about hearing God. Well, Jeremiah heard God here. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you and I have appointed you as a prophet to the nations. I did that before you. I did that for you. And so you have to see that, that, that what God is doing here, he's taking us into a new realm. <clears throat> he's taking us into this new thing. He does this before the foundations of the world. He takes us and anoints us and calls us and chooses us before the foundations of the world. He does it before the foundations of the world. He forms us. Now, I don't have a Bible verse for this, but I personally believe that, um, that uh, before we were even thought of, that God had already talked to us about what we were supposed to be doing and what our destiny on earth was. God formed us by shaping our delicate inside. Now, I don't know how many organs we have in our body. I know the biggest organ we have in our body is our skin. But think about it. Have you ever looked at the inside of a human being via pictures or whatever? I mean, the heart, I never knew this, but the heart has strings attached to it. That's why we call it the heart strings. He's pulling on my heart strings. And when you, when you walk in discouragement, despair, those heart strings break. They, 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 they become injured. God formed and shaped our delicate inside and our intricate outside. I mean, it's just mind boggling to me how muscles and, and the nervous system, how that all works you know, sensors throughout our body so I can feel. My tongue can feel the back of my teeth. And I don't know if my teeth can feel my tongue, but it's weird. Now, all of you are trying it, so that's awesome. Let me know what you think. Anyway, verse 14, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking, and it simply amazes me to think about it. Now, the best part about this is that in, um, in, 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 in Song of Songs, chapter 4, verse 9, he says that uh, we, take his, we leave him breathless. And here David is saying that he leaves us breathless by his works. It simply amazes me to think about it. It's just like, in other words, in our society, we would say, you know, he just blows our minds. How you thoroughly know me. God, it amazes me how you thoroughly know me. I'm just like flabbergasted. I can't comprehend it. It's too complex for me. 
verse 15, you even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. And I heard, and I, and I heard this, that you already won. You are already a winner. I am already a winner. How do I know that? Out of the millions of sperm cells that your father um, put into your mother who had one cell, one egg, all of those sperm cells, you know, were swimming up to try to fertilize that egg and they got up there and they were eating away at the egg. And then here you come along tailing behind and then all of a sudden, bam, a light shows Then they showed this. Uh, on a video that that a light burst the moment that you were conceived. The moment conception took place, a light burst, and that was you, and you won. All those other sperm cells lost. Some of them died out on the trip. Others died out trying to eat their way through. You made it. You win. You already are a winner. God created you in the secret place, and God does not create garbage. God does not create garbage. God does not create disposable stuff. When you were created, the Bible says that you were created in God's image. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And God made you. He made you perfectly. He carefully made you. He skillfully shaped you from nothing into something. God saw who he created you to be before you even became you. He saw you. Who He saw this. Who you were created to be. You weren't created to be Billy Graham. I wasn't created to be Billy Graham. I was created to be who I am today. Before I had ever seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in the book. God is not responsible for our potential. God is not responsible for that. He's responsible for our purpose. God already wrote these things in a book. How do I know that? Well, because let's pretend that this is time. Genesis 1.1, Revelation, amen. And God was looking and he saw what was going to happen before it even happened. Wow. And I love this verse, 17 and 18. Every single moment you are thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Oh God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. When I awake with you each morning, sorry, when I awake each morning, you're still with me. These two verses alone are the most powerful verses, I believe, for any human being to understand how great they are in, the God, in God's eyes. Every single moment you're thinking of me, and th these thinkings are cherished thoughts. They are thoughts of love. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I have to you, for you. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. His love thoughts toward you, another way to say this, his love thoughts toward you are more than the grains of sand on every shore. Now, I had a friend, and I didn't scientifically do this, so I don't know. But in that, uh, one of the things I learned from questions for Jesus was, God, what do you think about me right now what do you love the most about me right now and i and i would take five a day i would look myself in the mirror god what do you think what do you love the most about me right now 
and I'll wait. And the first, for me, it's the first thought that comes into my brain, comes into my mind at that point that I, you know, because I don't have a chance to think about it. And if it's a good thought, it's not from the devil because the devil doesn't want you to believe in yourself. Um, if it's a if it's a bad thought, it's from the devil, and you didn't have a chance to imp- implement that. So I know that it wasn't me. So what does God think of you? And I and I I would take five a day. I talk about it in my book. Take five a day. Now I had a friend who told me this, and again, this is not scientific, um, but. Anyway, he says, if you take a handful, a heaping handful of sand, okay, and you just dig in there and you pick it up, there's 100,000 grains of sand in there. And if you were to pluck out five per day, times 365, sometimes 366, it would take you 54 years to get through that one handful. Just doing five a day. Now, if you multiply that, I don't know how many grains of sand there are on the earth. It, it, you know, it's just out of, out of my brain. But think about this. Every grain of sand. You got the Sahara Desert. You got the Mojave Desert. You got Arizona. You got the beaches. Um, you got all of those sands. And God has those kind, that amount of love thoughts to cherished thoughts toward you every moment of every day and in spite of that in spite of what we think in spite of what we do god's character cannot change he still loves you god is still good his character will never change his character will never change you can always trust his character you can always find security in his character. You can never find security in what he's going to do next because seldom do we know what he's going to do next. But you can always find security in who he is. You always know where you stand with God. God's love thoughts toward you are more than every grain of sand. It doesn't matter what people think about you. I don't care what people think about me. They can't do anything to me. What are they going to do? Shoot me? (laughs) Big deal. They can't do anything to you. They can't do anything to you. And they won't. You know, you fear the man who can kill your soul or send your soul Don't fear the man who can kill the body. God loves you. He died for you. For God, everybody say it, for God so loved you. God so loved Tom that he gave his only begotten son. And and, and Hebrews 12, he says that, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, he says that uh, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. And that when Tom believed in him, Tom's not going to perish, but of everlasting life. God's thinking about you right now, every single moment. He has good thoughts toward you. All right. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I want to bless you just, you know, for hanging in there. And uh, comment, like, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel, to my uh, podcast channel. Comment, share, like these videos on Facebook. Share them especially with your friends. And we'll see where we go. All right, ma'am. This is Friday. Uh, We'll talk to you. I guess we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Have a great day.